I can install bootloader software onto brand new Atmega chips. I'm going to need to run connections between 5 volts and ground and 4 of the digital pins on the first Arduino with these 6 ICSP pins on the second one. Rather than messing around with a bunch of jumper wires like these and having spaghetti dancing all over my project, I'd like to build a ribbon cable. Let's see how we do that. This is a 40 wire ribbon cable that I found on eBay. This one has male connectors on one end and female connectors on the other. That will work well for this build. The cable has 10 different colors which it repeats four times for 40 leads in all. When I do projects, if I can, I always like to use red leads for positive voltages and black ones for ground. Because 5 volts in ground and the data pins are on opposite sides of the Arduino board, I'm going to peel this apart right here so that my red and black lines will be along the right edge of the ribbon cable. Do you see how there's a brown lead in between my red and black ones here? I don't want that one. I'll just cut it off. Cut it off at both ends. There will be an extra wire in here with no connections, but we can just ignore it. Here's my 5 volt and ground. I will need four more for the digital pins. One, two, three, four. These would be the data lines. I'll just peel these others off right here. I'll save them for another project. A couple of them might make a nice speaker leads. Now I have a ribbon cable ready to be plugged into the two Arduinos. I will plug the red and black into 5 volts and ground. Right here. That looks good. These have to go all the way across to the other side. If necessary, we can peel them apart a little more. Let's put them in in order. The first one goes in pin 10. And 11, twelve, and 13. As you can see, I'm fooling around a lot trying to put all of them in. But I'll show you in a minute how we're going to make this a lot easier. I see I have a little brown wire still sticking out here. Let's trim that off. That looks pretty good. Well, you saw how I was fooling around trying to get all these pins in this header over here. We can make this a lot easier by tying them together so that they form one solid plug. We will wrap them with electrical tape. We'll wrap it tight and it will work pretty good. So that you can see better what I'm doing, I'll use red tape instead of black. I've unplugged the 5 volts in ground and flipped them out of the way so that I can work on this. I cut off a section of tape and while they're still plugged into the board I start wrapping them ar the tape around the pins. I want to be sure that my pins are all the way down and tight next to each other. As I wrap it I want to be sure that it's real tight. After you get a turn or two around, you can unplug the pins. You just keep wrapping, forming a plug as you go round and round. It's the tightness of the tape that turns this into a nice solid plug.
This is starting to look pretty good here. This tape's a lot longer than the plugs. We can improve the looks of this by taking my blade and cutting some of this tape off. Now the back side. Now let's get this off of here. Let's see how this is going to look on the board. Real easy to install. I will do the same with the other two leads. This gives us two nice plugs. Now let's make some notes so we can get the next connector set up in the right order. The ICSP header has six, six pins. They're laid out like this. This is pin one. Next to it, pin two. Down here is pin three and four. And at the bottom, pin five and six. Five volts needs to go to pin two. And ground goes to pin six. Our data pin ten goes to pin five. One, two, three, four, five. And pin ten is our orange leak. Pin 11 goes to pin 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pin 11 is yellow. Pin 12 goes to pin 1. Pin 1 will be green. And finally, pin 13 goes to 3. 1, 2, 3. And that one is blue. So this shows us which wires go where when we start hooking them up to our ICSP header. Now we'll take our female connectors and put them on these pins. We'll start with the green one. The green one goes on pin 1. Then pin 2 is our 5 volts. That's a red one. Now pin 3 will be blue. I'll wrap this around underneath. Next is yellow. Yellow goes on pin 4. Now the orange one. Orange goes down here on pin 5. And finally, the black one, our ground. It goes on pin 6. Push them all down. Get them snug and tight. And we're ready to wrap the plug just as we did the two on the other end.
What we have to remember is that the red and black leads go on the outside of the board. That way we know we have it plugged in right. And it plugs right in. Let's take a look at the two boards together. Our upstream Arduino, the one that's going to do all the programming, gets the mail pins. It's easy to keep track of where these go because there'll be two empty holes on both sides of this plug. Our 5 volts and ground goes right in here. This board is ready to go. Now our downstream Arduino, the one that gets the brand new chip, it's empty right now, gets this guy. Again, we want to be sure that the red and black leads are on the outside of the board. And there we go. We now have two Arduinos, gang together, ready to program chips.